Greetings, welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to the Narrowest Christ for All Nations. Let us pray. Lord, you are King above all kings, Lord above all lords. You purposed it in your heart even before the foundation of the world was laid that we should exist in this situation and be redeemed by the blood of your son Jesus Christ for he was slain before the foundation of the world even before things came into existence you knew them all therefore Lord we ask that you direct our hearts unto wisdom teach us to know who we are in this world, how we should live. Most importantly, Lord, help us to understand the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and what we need to do to receive this gift of eternal life, this free gift of eternal life with you forever. Help us to be overcomers. Wake us up in every aspect of our lives that we are sleeping, especially in our faith. Lord, strengthen the weak. Heal the blind. Give ear to the deaf. Heal the sick. Raise the fallen. And Lord God, those who have abandoned the race, we ask, O oh Lord, our Father and God, that you draw them to yourself. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today we are looking at the topic, the eternal joy of the overcomers. The eternal joy of the overcomers. There are some things that a lot of people who are Christians have not yet come to understand. And that is who they really are in this world. Who are we? A lot of people have not yet come to understand that we are in a battle in this world. And it is painful for those who are in the battlefield to think that they are in the in a recreational center. It is painful for a captain to go to war with his soldiers. And the soldiers, the men who are supposed to fight, are so much concerned about the loot, what they are going to get from the battle. If they don't focus on the victory, you as a soldier, if you don't focus on the victory, if you focus on what you're going to get after the victory, you may end up being dead. That's exactly why a lot of Christians are mix, missing the mark. Let's look at the word of God. Revelation chapter 21, 1 to 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride and done for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Let's continue. Verse 4 to 8. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 
And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life. He that overcometh shall inherit all, inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. May the Lord bless his words in our heart. Before I explain, I want us to look at the words of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. To each of the churches he wrote to, there is a word he never missed using, and that word is overcome it. We just read the revelation, the promises of God that he gave through Jesus Christ in the revelation to John. And we see the new Jerusalem that is going to come down from heaven. The new city. Later we shall look at some description of this city. We're talking about the joy of the overcomers. Are we overcomers? Before you can overcome, before you can be called an overcomer, there must be some level of obstacles that you must have gone through. You can't just be called an overcomer because uh, if there's nothing you overcame, you can be an overcomer. Let's just quickly look at this word, the, the dictionary meaning. Overcomer means a person who overcomes something. One who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty. So if you do not succeed, if there's no challenge, if you do not succeed over any adverse situation, you can't be referred to as an overcomer. We as believers, we are on a journey. We are pilgrims in this world. And the things that we have, they are things that are given to us to enable us to live a victorious life. For his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us. Everything we have are to enable us to serve God well and overcome. Now let's look at this revelation. Unfortunately, a lot of people are measuring on the few what you need for your journey than the success of the journey itself. How can you, you as a believer, how can you, if you're traveling, just listen to this, how can you major be so concerned about the fuel you are using to travel than the success of the journey, than the destination? The purpose for traveling is for you to get to a destination. So why is it that a lot of people get carried away by the provisions that's supposed to help them get to their destination than the destination itself? Jesus Christ 
wants us that there is one thing we need to seek and that is the kingdom of God seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing money wives husbands children health every other thing name it everything else will be added unto us now a lot of people have abandoned the goal and they are pursuing fervently the additions may god help us look at those seven letters that was written to asia manual you will always see these revelation 2 7 to him that overcome it 2 11 he that overcome it 2 17 to him that overcome it 2 26 and he that overcome it revelation 3 5 he that overcome it 3 12 him that overcome it revelation 3 21 to him that overcome it jesus is saying that there are things we need to overcome and each time he says to him that overcome it he that overcome it he will always tell you what you're going to get at the end i want to ask a question are you measuring on the battle instead of on, instead of on your victory a lot of christians measure on the battle they put in everything into the battle and they, they are not concerned about the victory they are so concerned about just the fight and that's exactly what a lot of people are doing today they don't care about heaven but they're always fighting enemies they're always fighting but the ultimate goal is the new paradise that is the ultimate goal satan is throwing everything at you because he wants to stop you from entering so why is it that even though he's throwing everything at you you are more concerned about the battle and not the reason he is throwing everything at you Satan brings sickness because he needs your soul. He brings hardship because he's interested in your soul. He brings persecution, trials, because he is interested in your soul. Sometimes he makes you not to get married because he wants you to be lonely so that you can give up on your God. He is interested in your soul. A lot of times, Satan pushes people to the wall and they say, okay, I surrender. Give me those things and take my soul. People sell their souls every now and then. You, as a believer, the question is, have you forgotten about the goal? Are you fighting as an overcomer? There is the joy of eternity waiting for us. The joy of the eternal joy of the overcomers. The eternal joy of the overcomers. This joy is a joy that never ends. It knows no end at all. This is a joy that God alone can give. This joy is not like the joy of the world. The joy of the world has an end. It is ephemeral. It is short-lived. It doesn't last long. But the joy that God gives is the joy that no man will take away. Brethren, we are in a battlefield. If you don't get 
as much things from this message. I want you to hold this thing dearly. And that thing I want you to hold dearly is for you to understand that it is needful for you to make up your mind that even if I even if I'm a failure in this world, I want to make eternal life. I want to have eternal life. Sometimes when I see people who prosper according to the terms of the world and not according to the terms of God, because there is good success and there is the dubious success. The good success, according to Joshua 1 8, is success when your soul is prospering and you are also prospering. That success is not at the expense of your soul. When I see people prospering and doing evil, like politicians stealing money, the globalists flying private jets, the false prophets living the best life they can ever have in this world. When I see them, I tell myself, I know your end. I know where you will end up. And that is the truth. I know where they will end up. If you are in the world, you think they are enjoying so much, but it is that enjoyment is for a short time. So you can choose to enjoy here and die forever. Like you were dying, you were screaming, and the death doesn't come to an end. Or you can choose to suffer for a while, while on earth, like Lazarus, and end up in the bosom of Abraham. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they want to enjoy here. Well, I'm not trying to mock anybody, but let me tell you this. When I see some Christians praying and screaming, Probably because they don't have children. I'm not trying to mock them. And when I see them praying because they have no job and crying every day, you, when you see them, you see the burden on their hearts. Yet, they can't cry and ask God to save their souls. I weep for them. We are in Africa where people get carried away. If you don't have children, they say you are nobody. <laughs> I've never had one. And I've never tried to have one. Although I am going to have. I don't actually talk about my personal life. <laughs> my family life or life. But I'm just telling you. But have I been worried before? Yes. Am I worried now? No. <laughs> I'm not worried. Because I understand God's will for my life, that there is time for everything. People who are not concerned about their salvation. When we think about the judgment, our hearts supposed to quake. But nobody's hearts quake now. But when they think of the stock market, their hearts skip. <laughs> Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Keep your treasures in heaven. We are in a battlefield. We are pilgrims while we are traveling through this world. We are, we are just passing through. A songwriter says, this world is not my home. I'm only passing through. Some of us, we have come to leave. And not actually we don't want to pass through but whether you like it or not you will leave it could even be now how many of us have this wrong understanding about their existence in this world 
Let's look at Acts of Apostles chapter 14, 22. Confirming the source of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. We must, through much tribulations, we must, through much trials, persecutions, enter into the kingdom of God. I know it is not sweet. Temptations come a lot of times and we discover that we have no strength to actually overcome. But we are strong through Christ who gives us the strength. Because the power of God every time is made perfect in our weaknesses. Look at the ten virgins. Do you know all of them do stuff? And each and every one of them, including the foolish and the wise, every one of them does stuff. So it is not actually by strength they waited and waited and became tired and they slept off. But when it was time to trim their lamb, they had all. The five, full, the five wise virgins had all. Have enough grace. And the grace of God will always pull you through so that you don't give up. We are in a battle in this world. The joy, the eternal joy of the overcomers. If you are passing through anything, look up to God. He will see you through. Are you persecuted? Are you barren? Are you penniless? Are you currently lying on a sick bed? Have you lost your love? Are you bereaved? Look up to God. I tell myself a lot of times that this world is my hell. I don't want to go to another hell. Do you know what it means to be a Nigerian? Especially if you don't want to live your life the way other people live their lives. Do you know what it means to be a Nigerian? Do you know what it means to preach the truth in the midst of wolves in cheap clothing? Do you know what it means to come from a country that has a reputation of scamming? Do you know what it means to live in Sodom and Gomorrah as Lot, yet have virgins in your house? Not one, but two. Do you know what it means to introduce yourself to people outside this continent that, oh, I'm Ozana David, I am from Nigeria, and they block you? Do you know what that means? Because they feel you are a criminal. This world is my hell. Do you know what it means when your right is being violated, but you can go to court? You can go to the law court and seek for justice because those who are there are corrupt. Do you know what it means when you are from an oil-producing community, but you have no electricity? Like in my town, in my village, we have over 36 wells, all wells that they're running. We have no electricity. Do you know what it means when you live in a place where the politicians take all the money abroad and live on borrowed money? Do you know what it means to live in a country where you can't as access many markets online because they feel that everybody from there is a thief? 
This world is my hell. I don't want to go to another hell fire. Nigerians should go to hell. They shouldn't go to hell. Because hell is here. They shouldn't go to another hell. I'm not trying to compare Nigeria to hellfire. There is no reason for that comparison. Because that hell, the hellfire God prepared wasn't for men. It was for the devil and his fallen angels. But I'm just trying to tell you that I have told myself that this world is my hell. To you, it may be your heaven. To you, this is the place you want to make it and make a name for yourself at the expense of your soul. But to me, no. I must do the best I can to sacrifice everything I have and everything that I am to enter into this kingdom. There is no place between heaven and hell where we can be. If there had been a place, I wouldn't have worked so hard. I would have just preferred to go to that place. But if we can overcome, we will earn a welcome from God. And He will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Sometimes, I say, if God asks me to come, I've said it this month, if God asks me to come, I will never ask him for an extra second in this world. <laughs> what, are we, what are we here for? What are we staying here for 90 years, 80 years, 75 years? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I say, anytime I can't climb the pulpit, to preach God's word again effectively, then I don't have anything I'm doing here anymore. And so long as I'm here, no amassing of wealth. The dream is to die empty. The dream is to die empty and not take anything along finish all the assignments here and on going to heaven with talents that are unused let's continue john 16 20 and 21 verily verily i say unto you that you shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice today you may be weeping and the world is rejoicing. You are suffering. People are mocking you. But the world, they can bribe their way through. Listen, Jesus has a message for you. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow. Because her hour is come. Listen. Believe us, this is our hour of pain. This is our time of suffering. This is our time of persecution. After now, there will be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. Jesus Christ says, Behold, I make all things new. It is done. Are you enduring persecutions? Or are you giving up? Some of you are angry at your pastor and you don't want to go to church. <laughs> you are angry at your pastor. You are angry at the usher. You are angry at your pastor's wife. He don't want to go to church. You are angry you don't want to go to church because a, 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 a false prophet scammed you. <laughs> 21. A woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow because her hour is come. 
but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers it no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. A time is coming, and a time is now, when we shall face diverse temptations, different kinds of problems. But if we can just hold on to our faith and not give up, we will soon reap. We will soon reap if you don't give up. There's a woman who in, in the church in cathedral where I served. For the 10 years I was there, every month, there is money she sets aside. She gives recharge card to every priest in the cathedral. One prayer I used to pray for her, she's been doing it for many years before I got there. One prayer I pray for her is that all these things you do, may God make you, keep you, guide you until you enter the kingdom so that you can reap. That's a prayer I pray for her every time. That God will guide her and protect her until she enters the kingdom. We will, through many trials, enter this kingdom. And we will reap when we get it. Revelation 2, 7. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Me, I believe that the tree of life was uprooted by God. Because it cannot die. It has life in itself. And put in the midst of the paradise of God. That's what I believe. I believe because it is in Genesis, it is called the tree of life. When you use the article, the definite article, the, you're referring to something that is very very uh, it, either it is only one thing that is existing or it is a principal thing if we can overcome we will enter life and that life is eternal life and it is a life that nobody can take away from us it is a life that only Jesus Christ gives to those who love him. And that life is the very life of God. That life is eternal life. Are you missing out in the joy, in receiving the joy, the eternal joy of the overcomers? Let's continue. We, we, when we overcome, we will have eternal life and we will have life in ourselves let me show you a few things about this paradise of god isaiah 11 4 to 9 but with righteousness shall he judge the poor this is jesus christ when he comes to judge and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and righteousness shall be the ghetto of his loins and faithfulness the ghetto of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the key and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them verse 7 and the cow and the bear 
shall feed their young ones shall lie down together without the spilling of blood and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and the winged child shall put his head on the cockatrice then they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers as the waters cover the sea amen this is a place God has prepared for us this is a place that the wicked shall not come the millennial reign and the new Jerusalem these are times that righteousness shall reign Jesus shall be in charge evil people shall not be in existence have you been persecuted <laughs> Now it's very difficult to even trust people. Have you been persecuted by people? Like you try to do business with people, you trust people, people ask you to borrow money, uh, to lend them money, you give to them, they don't give back. You show love, they pay you back with evil. You see people as your Christian brothers, as your Christian sisters, and at the end of it, they pay you with evil. You see a man of God as a true men of God but at the end they pay you with evil you are you constantly facing disappointment there is a home there is a city where the evil will not leave oh. let's read this revelation chapter 21 this is about the new Jerusalem it here from 18 downward we have some details here Revelation 21, 18 to 27. And the building of the wall of it was of Jasper, and the city was pure gold. Please, just listen. This is where we are going. When you are in trouble, close your eyes and picture Revelation 21, 18 to 27 in your mind. Just picture the description. Just think about this. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Please don't miss it. Don't miss this place. The first foundation was Jasper, the second sapphire, the third a Chalcedony, the fourth an emerald. The fifth Sardonis, the sixth Sardius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Berry, the ninth Topaz, a Topaz, the tenth are uh, Chrysoprasus, the eleventh are uh, Jacinth, the twelfth an Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pairs. Every several gates was of one pair. And the street of the city was pure gold, and it was transparent glass. Amen. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And all the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by, by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in all wise enter into it anything that defileth 
neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make it a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did light in it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Praise God. Do everything possible to enter. There, in the Isaiah we read, there is nobody like Lim. Like me, I had a putation in 2010. I had a transtibia amputation in my left leg. I'm not going to use artificial leg in heaven. <laughs> he said, Behold, I make all things new. Some of you, you can't eat every food because of your health. You can't, you have the money, you have the food, you can enjoy it because of your health. Then we will eat everything. <laughs> Don't miss out. Forget about the persecutions of this world and just ask the Lord to give you the grace to overcome. To him that overcome it. To him that overcome it. Don't forget this. To him that overcome it. If you can overcome. If you can just overcome. Remember these words of Jesus Christ. To him that overcome it. In Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. To him that overcome it. To, to all the churches he say the same thing. To him that overcome it. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2, 10 and 11. Fear none of those things. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Uh, there are some of you who believe that, Oh, uh, God is far away from me. If he sees my troubles, why is he silent? He knows. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you, I will give thee a crown of life. And he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcome it, he that overcome it shall not be hurt of the second death. Are you fighting to overcome or you will give up on the battle of this life? Remember, the goal is eternal life. Is that your goal too? Or you have another goal? Are you among those who go into different secret societies, into different covens, are you among those who go to consult which doctors? Because they have symbols, because they have Bible. This is what is deceiving the people of this world. Anointing or and the Bible. <laughs> Anybody can hold these two things. These two things have become items of deception. This is the truth. And this is supposed to represent the anointing. <laughs> but let's not forget that Satan can never kind of feed something that is kind of feed. You can't fake what is already fake. You can only fake what is true. Please, let's be patient. We will reap very soon. Those of you who sow into the ministry, those of you who give so much, every week you make sure you give something to the poor, you give to support the works of God, you will reap if you do not give up. Just make sure that you are in Christ and that you die in Christ. Let's look at Zerah chapter 35, 3 to 10. It's quite a long passage, but I want us to read it. 
strengthen you the weakens and confirm the feeble needs. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong. You Christian, you're afraid, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. Let me tell you something. A lot of times when I see the way people treat me, after doing good, and I see what they pay me with, I feel very bad. I feel very pained in my heart. I'm not even talking about appreciating the good. But the appreciation is not my problem. I don't need it. But people turning around after receiving your good and stab you at the back is painful. Today, I've removed myself from the society. I have no friend, no pastor friend, no prophet friend. I just want to be on my own. Too much betrayal, too much struggles in the world. But in the world to come, all these things will be no more. The wicked will be no more. Sometimes they do some things and you feel like retaliating. You feel like, why not I retaliate? Listen, you can't pay the wicked. You can't pay them. God knows the weight of their sins. Only God will pay them. Don't retaliate. There are some battles you need to give to God and let God fight. Some judgments, leave them to God. Leave them for him and let him be in charge of those battles. Even your God will come with vengeance. Even God with the recompense. He will come and save you. Verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Praise God. Then shall the lame. Then shall the lame man. Leap as an hat, like me. Let me tell you one thing. If I go to hell, I will leap with one leg in hell. But if I go to heaven, I will have two legs. Because we shall receive the body, the form, our bodies shall receive the form of angels. Within a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Amen. <laughs> Think about these things in your trouble. In your, during the times of your persecution, think about these very things. And encourage yourself in the Lord. Think about these things. Be encouraged. Don't give up on you, God. I'm really excited because I have hope. At least, man that is born of woman has few days, but within these few days, he has many troubles. We have hope. Let's continue. Verse 6. Then shall the lame, then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For the wilderness shall, wilderness shall water break out, waters break out, and the streams in the desert, and the pasture ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall grass with reeds and rushes. Verse 8. And an highway shall be there, and a, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the fools shall not enter in. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up the run. It shall not be found there. 
but the redeemed shall walk dead. If you are listening to me and you are a lion, you can you, you share you can share blood, you eat blood, you drink blood, you eat flesh, you will not make it. No matter how much you give to God, no matter how much you work for him, except you repent. If you don't repent, the heaven is not for you. If you are a businessman and you do evil, you use dubious means to make your money, you are not entering there. If you are a man of God, you lie in the name of God, you are not entering there. Let's continue. Verse 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return, and king and come to Zion, and with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Amen. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall fly shall flee away all these things sorrows sighing shall all flee away let me ask you a question what is that trouble that is dividing your attention what is that trouble what is that problem what is that need that made you to drop your cross. <sighs> Why? I know you've been praying. I know we need to pray and ask God to give us what we need. But why don't you have the faith of Easter? If I perish, I perish. Why don't you have the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh, King, we will not bow. If you want to cast us into the fire, feel very free. We know our God can save us. But even if in his own wisdom chooses not to save us, we will not bow. Why don't you have that faith? That whatever the case is, I'm not going to give up. People go into marriage with so much expectation. Yes, that's your right. Have that expectation. To have children. But what if the children are not coming? Will you kill yourself? Don't kill yourself. Don't drop your Bible. I know you're a graduate. You need a job. The job has not come. Why put your hands into doing evil? This year, by October, I will be 40 years old. Yeah. October 40, I will be 40 years old. There are lots of things I haven't achieved in life. But is that my problem? <laughs> That's not my problem. I am, if you're close to me, you will understand that I am one of the few people in this world who do not worry about anything at all. I don't worry. <laughs> Even if somebody drops dead here now, I will still smile. That's my life. Nothing takes away my peace. I don't care about the things of this world. The things that people like so much, they are even the things that I don't give much credit and value to. People like money so much, but is money my problem? It's not my problem. In fact, some people, they quarrel with me that why, why give almost everything away I have not even started <laughs> one of my dreams is I say that before I die I'm going to send everything ahead of me I'm not leaving anything behind and that's the truth I'm not leaving anything behind I will send everything to the my treasure in heaven I have a bank there I have to send everything ahead of me. If I have children, I could give them a few things, but I have to wheel everything out. That's the truth. Even now, those of you who support us, though not many people support us, but those of you and those of you who care to know, my money goes to the poor. That is
is a vow I made to my God. That God, if you bless me in this world, my money will go to the poor and to support your work, the work of the ministry. And that's exactly what I do. I need very little. And I am not leaving properties behind. I will take them along. As I'm leaving this world, I'm taking everything along. Yes, I have to give them out. I have to will them out. Where your heart is, there your treasure. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Lay your treasures in heaven. Forget about the troubles of this world. And have the hope of eternal life. Have that hope that there is a place in heaven. That God has prepared for you. Are you ready? Am I ready? Are you ready to enter? Or you will carry the way? Are you ready for that place? The place of eternal joy. Remember the words of Jesus Christ. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. To him. To him that overcometh. He that overcometh. To him. He that overcome it, and he that overcome it, he that overcome it, he that overcome it, or him that overcome it. Why? He that overcome it. If there is no battle to fight, there is a battle to fight. Are you fighting the battle, or you have given up on God? If you're giving up on your faith, it's time to get back to God. Let us pray. Lord, help us. Even in our weakest moment, Father, please help us. We love you and we trust you. We believe in you that you will see us through. Lord, please, in your mercy, help us to have this joy. You have finished this work. The work of our salvation was finished on the cross of Calvary. You said, it is finished. You finished everything. You've made all things possible for us to enter. Lord, heal our ignorance. Help us to understand that all the bullets we get, all the troubles we face, the aim at taking away eternal life from us. Lord, please help us to understand. Help us to follow. Help us to love you. Help us to do your will. Help us to love you with our substances. Help us to love you with the whole of our hearts. Help us to love you with everything we have, everything we are. Those who are falling, Lord, wake them up. Stressing the weak. Heal the blind. Those who have stony hearts, Lord, give them the heart of flesh and break down their stony hearts. Thank you, Lord. I pray for as many who are sick, Lord, heal them. Those who are supporting our ministries and our charity organization, Lord, please provide for them. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this message with others and follow this page. Subscribe to this channel and the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I want to sincerely appreciate those who have been supporting our ministries. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. A lot of people don't like the truth. Those of you who like the truth will give to promote the truth. May the Lord God promote truth in your life. May the Lord fight all your battles for you and open the windows of heaven upon your life. See you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.